Hello to Rosemary, John, and Michael D'Alessandro, and the Jones Joy Foundation. Thank you for having me and support this message of hope and action for the child's safety, because that's what this is all about. Yeah, well, now's the time for all of us to get together with one another. We got to iron out our problems and iron out our quarrels And try to live as brothers And try to find the peace within Without stepping on one another And to respect the women of the world Remember we all had mothers We got to make this land a better land Than the world in which we live And we gotta help each man to be a better man With the kindness that we give, yeah I know we can make it I know then well we can work it out Yes we can, I know we can, can Yes we can, can Why can't we if we wanna, yes we I know we can make it I know we sure can, we can work it out Yes we can, I know we can, can Yes we can, can oh, Why can't we if we want to, yes we can We gotta take care of all the children the children of the world Cause they're our greatest hope for the future Little bitty boys and girls We got to make this land a better land And then the world in which we live And we got to help each man to be a better man With the kindness that we give, yeah I know we can make it I know dang well we can work it out Yes, we can, I know we can, can, yes, we can, can, why can't we if we want to, yes, we can. 
Hi, I'm Nancy Candia, and I'm so grateful to have been asked to help out uh, jo the Jones Joy Foundation with the Child Safety Fundraiser. Uh, so grateful for all the work that those guys do. So what I'd like to do with you today is go through a, a relaxation and um, a few moments or a couple minutes of mindfulness. So we'll just start, please get comfortable in a seat. Um, please, if you're driving, don't close your eyes. So begin to notice the temperature of the space that you're in, any sounds. Notice where your feet are touching the ground. The backs of your legs are touching the support underneath them. Notice where your hands are touching the legs or the chair that you're sitting in. Notice if your shoulders are lifted or relaxed. Soften the inner and outer corners of your eyes. And notice the air coming in and out through your nose. All right. So just that few seconds of mindfulness can always help slow us down and, and get, feel, make us feel a little bit more um, centered. Let's get, let's do some breath work. Okay, so I wanna stretch out the upper body. So notice how it feels to breathe. Notice if it's easier to inhale or easier to exhale. Okay, go ahead, interlace your fingers, turn your palms inside out, press your palms forward and round your spine. Take a deep breath. On your next inhale, lift your arms up overhead and take a breath here. Bring your hands behind your head, elbows up. Take a breath here. Good, interlace your fingers behind your back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Lift your chin up and take a breath here. Twisting off to one side. Good, and the other. Good, come back to center and just sit back and notice how it feels to breathe. Nice, and that is our few moments of mindfulness. have taken more than I give them. It's not easy to know I'm not anything like I used to be. Although it's true, I was never attention sweet center. I, I soon remember that She lies. She is hard on film. She, she is broken. broken. You won't ask for help. She is messy, but she's kind. She is lonely most of the time. She is all of this mixed up and baked in a beautiful pie. She is gone, but she used to be mine. And it's not what I asked for. Sometimes life just slips in through a back door and carves out a 
person and makes you believe it's all true. Now I got you. You're not what I asked for. If I'm honest, I know I would give it all back for a chance to start over. The girl that I knew will be reckless just enough to get hurt, but who learns how to toughen up when she's bruised and gets used by a man who can't love, and then she gets stuck and is scared of the life that. Inside her, growing stronger each day till it finally reminds her to fight just a little and bring back the fire in her eyes. That's, That's been, been good, but you still be She is lonely most of the time. She is all of this mixed up and baked in a beautiful pie. She is gone, but she used to be mine. The red trucks behind me are often seen as symbols of strength and sometimes hope in the worst of times. But they really cannot compare to the strength I see in Rosemary and both of her sons. As many of you know, Joan, Rosemary's daughter, was taken from them on April 19th, 1973. The foundation she and her sons founded has been steadfast about preserving the safety of our nation's children. And to me, there is no greater way to honor Joan's memory. Rosemary has transformed the loss of a child into such a positive mission and message for all of us. I'm very honored to know her. Please support Joan's joy and help Rosemary continue to do the work that has made so many children so much safer. God bless you, Rosemary. You're my hero. you see it takes a little courage and some humility and take a look and
child and tell me how you feel Most of it is illusion, some of this is real I hope you find whatever you're looking for I hope you find this soul and so much more I hope your tears will dry someday This is all for you, I pray Those tears begin to roll down your face You know those tears will never leave a trace You know they won't Those tears will never leave a trace, no, no you go and let you run away nothing more that I can do and nothing I can say hey only want to keep you warm keep you warm inside now it's all that I can do with the storm I try to hide I hope you find whatever you're looking So and so much more I hope your tears will dry someday This is all for you, I pray and When those tears begin to roll down your face You know those tears will never Your tears will dry someday This is all for you, I pray I hope your tears will dry someday This is all for you, I pray Someday, yeah. this is all for you. I pray, yeah. this is all for you. This is all for you. This is all for you. I Send me 
volunteers here at the shelter in Englewood, New Jersey. Um, so these are some of our cats. This is our shelter, as you can see. Um, we're a no-kill animal shelter, and we have dogs and cats. And we're just a great organization trying to save animals. Jones Joy was here at some point last year um, with an organization with children, and it was fabulous. They, the children interna interacted with the animals, with the dogs and the cats, and it was, it was awesome. It was a great experience for all of us. My name is Olivia Galgano. I am a professional ballet teacher. I was a professional ballet dancer when I was younger. I come from Boston. I started up in Boston. I had joined the Boston Ballet Company. And then because they didn't continue on with their work, I ran to New York, took an audition, and was very fortunate to get into the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo which at the time was located in the United States. I traveled around the States. We must have hit every little city in the country. And it was very much fun. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I got to do some professional solo dancing as well with the company. At the end of my dancing with the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, I then had met my husband and we stayed in New York and I turned into some teaching. I love teaching. And that's, of course, where I was able to meet Joan D'Alessandro. She was studying at the Joan Wolf School of Ballet, which I'll get back to in a minute. My first professional teaching was at a studio called Blanche in New York City. 
Then I came out to New Jersey, and I then did join Joan Wolf, and then I had my own studio in Closer with a Friend for many, many years, and I also had another studio in Ridgewood with another friend, which is where I am right now. Now, getting back to Joan, it was at the Joan, De, Joan Wolf School of Ballet that I met her. Sweet, sweet, charming little girl who loved to dance. She had a beautiful smile and she was very affectionate and she was very contagious to, you know, to love with, okay? Hello. I'd like to introduce you to my granddaughter. Her name is Sophia. She also is a ballet dancer. She's going to represent Joan D'Alessandro and I'm gonna teach you a lot of the steps that I did teach Joan who loved to do them. When Joan danced, she always had a smile on her face. Now, here we go. We always would start off with the positions. First position, and second position, and fifth position. That was always very smart. Joan learned very well. She was a bright girl. The next thing we would always do are the plies. We'd stand in a position and do two plies and a releve. And a one, and a two, three, and a four, and up. Hold and down we go. One and a two, three and a four, and up. Very good. That really worked their feet, and I like getting taller. As they got older, we put them into point shoes. That's really, really hard work. Now, the other thing Joan liked to do that we did were called spring points. And spring points and claps help to teach them rhythm. So there's a little mathematics going on here. Today we're going to do four spring points and four claps. And here we go. A one, two, and a three, and a four. And we clap our hands, we go. One, and a two, and a three, and a four. Clap our hands, and here we go. Excellent. As I said, I would sometimes do eight claps and four spring points, or six claps and two spring points. That gave them really thinking. Now, here we go now. We're going to move across the floor. These are little chasses, gallops we call them. This is where Joan would run to be the first one in line. She always liked to be the leader. So I would say, okay, everybody, let's get in line and she'd be there, standing there, ready to go. So here we go. And one and a two, three, four, five and six and seven and eight. One and a two, three and a four, five and six and seven and eight. Wonderful. Okay, now the last thing as we got older, they had to learn how to do on one leg standing with the other leg up. So we would do what we called a passe position. And we'd see who could stand the longest. Believe it or not, Joan was always one of the last ones up there. She had held it for a very long time. Very good. So that's pretty much a lot of what we did. At the end, we would try this nice little curtsy. As they come to the center and curtsy. And again, she'd be running the first one. She'd take a beautiful curtsy, cute smile on her face, and run back. But we're just gonna curtsy today, no running. So here goes Sophia, and curtsy here, and curtsy here, and throw kisses to everybody, out, and then they run and skip off the stage, off the- Hello again, everyone. I just want to say the spirit of Joan D'Alessandro continues to live today. We see her in the butterflies as they flow by. It's all due to the perseverance and dedication of her mother, Rosemary who has made such a tremendous difference for us today, and her two brothers who also are so dedicated. They have changed the laws and they have made child safety a much, much stronger uh, event today. So thank you for being here today. And may I also thank my granddaughter, Sophia, for her dancing for us here today, and my granddaughter, Alexandra, who was able to film this. Stay well, everybody, and keep Joan's spirit alive.
everybody. It's Anthony. My grandma Jackie and I recorded two songs for Joan's Joy Safety Fest. We dedicate the first song, Ode to Joy, to Joan, because it was her favorite song and she loved to play it on the piano. We picked the second song, Let It Be by the Beatles, because we found it relevant to the foundation and everything going on in the world as well. The message is to keep the faith and don't give up hope, even when times are tough, which is something we all know Joan's Joy has done over the years and it has fought tirelessly to help keep the children safe and for them to have justice in memory of Joan. God bless everyone, and God bless Joan's Joy. and today I'm going to be reading The Lucky Book of Riddles by Eva Moore. This was one of Joan's favorite books. Um, she picked it out from the book list in second grade when she was seven years old. She really loved this book. She even wrote her initials on the front cover. And you could ask anyone in her class. She really loved to crack jokes, and jokes are her favorite. So that's why she picked out The Book of Riddles as her favorite book to read. So I'm going to read you a couple of the pages from the book. So here are the riddles. You cannot see it, but you know it is there. You can see what it does to your hat, to your hair. What is it? It is the wind. Here is something that likes the wind. It flies in the sky, but it does not have wings. It has a tail, but it does not have legs. What is it? It is a kite. It has a head, but it cannot think. It has four feet, but it cannot walk. What is it? It is a bed. What do you always take off last before you get into bed? You take your feet off the floor. Its hands are always on its face when it goes. It stays in one place. What is it? It's a clock. They have tongues, but they do not talk. You tie them up when you go for a walk. What are they? Shoes. Who always goes to bed with shoes on? A horse. When do chickens have eight feet? When there are four of them. Why did the chicken run across the road? To get to the other side. How many sides does a barrel have? Two sides, the inside and the outside. What is the best thing to put into a pie? Your teeth. Sometimes it is short, sometimes it is tall, sometimes you cannot see it at all. What is it? It is a shadow. It has a head, it has a tail, but it does not have a body. What is it? It is a coin. What looks like half of cheese? The other half. Hi diddle diddle, there's the last riddle. What has no ends and a hole in the middle? The letter O. So this was one of Joan's favorite books, and I was happy enough to read it to you today. And again, it's The Lucky Book of Riddles, and it was one of her favorites in second grade. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cameron Nagel, and today I'm gonna to be singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow from Wizard of Oz. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a that I've heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me, where 
troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me somewhere over the rainbow skies are blue and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true if happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow why oh why can't i hi my name is raul cologne i'm a professional illustrator and i illustrate picture books and I want to talk a little bit of why I am talking to you today. It's because uh, one of the books I illustrated uh, turned out to be an iconic book and a book that I find very special and, and all the work I've done in the past. I met Rosemary D'Alessandro uh, a few years ago because I had signed another book for her that she found especially interesting and uh, it was titled uh, My Mama Had a Dancing Heart so I came to her house to sign this particular book for her as a special gift and uh, after that I started working on a personal picture book that I was doing for Simon & Schuster and lo and behold because I met Rosemary and I saw the great work she was doing for Jones Joy, I decided to dedicate this book to her. And the book is titled Draw. And um, the book is a very personal book in a sense that um, I was one of the first times I decided to write a book uh, about mm, a little of my experience as, a, as an artist and as a child, how I got started basically and got into drawing and uh, it's about a little boy who uh, spends his time his childhood basically drawing away mostly because he can't go to school because he's a sick boy so that's what you see here and um, spends his time in bed but in this particular book I wrote about a boy who used to uh, or was interested in drawing animals and does his own little safari and ends up going to Africa. How he gets there, well if you see the book you'll realize how he did that. But there you see him uh, in, in different illustrations you will be able to see that he's taking his time to draw all kinds of animals in Africa. And that's his ad adventure, trying to capture everything to do with Africa, these African animals. And at some point, he meets all kinds of animals, as you can see here, and he's drawing a gorilla, hippopotamus, and as you saw before, lions. Sometimes the tables turn on him, and sometimes his guests take the time to draw him. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, the story of everything he went through in this little adventure. Finally, uh, this elephant who becomes his friend says goodbye and the adventure ends with the boy back in his room where it all started. And if you notice, the book is... you didn't see any words. There's no text to the book. This is a wordless picture book and uh, that was the other interesting part of doing this special book because in this case the illustrator and author which is me of course is leaving the text and the story to you the pictures will tell the story but only the reader will figure out the story and that reader usually figures out the story in his own way he puts his own input into it or she puts her own input into it and uses her own imagination or his imagination to tell the story. Every time I visit schools the children have their own way of telling the story and that's the idea of a wordless picture book. 
allows the reader to use his own imagination in telling the story. And that's why they're still published today. I've published a couple of those. But this one is very special because it's for Joan and in her memory. And uh, I hope you all uh, feel like I do about Joan's joy and the safety of children and give all your support to Joan's joy. That's why I'm here today. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carly Gemolera. Today I'm going to play three songs. My first song is Ode to Joy. I want to play this song because I know it was Joan's favorite song.
welcoming habitat to attract butterflies to your home. My first tip, if you're choosing to design a butterfly garden on your property, is to pick a sunny spot. Butterflies love to bask in the sun. They're a kind of insect that cannot regulate their internal body temperature, and they depend on the sun for energy. So if you're designing a butterfly garden, Make sure to choose a spot that it gets at least six solid hours of sunlight per day. My second tip would be to provide some protection from the wind. Just think how hard a little butterfly has to struggle in breezy conditions. On your property, wind protection can come from a fence, your house, or tall plantings such as you see here. My third tip is to provide a variety of nectar sources from spring through fall. Most of us have flowers blooming in our gardens in the summertime, but have you thought about what is in your garden for the butterflies in April or say October? Some favorite plants that butterflies get nectar from are Gylardia, Liatris, Coreopsis, bee balm, butterfly weed, and then closer to the fall, autumn joy sedum, New England aster, and goldenrod. My fourth tip is to provide a diversity of flowers, as you see in this video. Butterflies like monarchs and swallowtails enjoy large flat surface flowers that provide a stable landing space. Flowers that have lots of small clusters, such as milkweed, attract butterflies of all sizes. provide host flowers and plants for butterflies. Butterflies need something to eat. Those cabbage whites we just saw were probably looking for some member of the cabbage family. They like to lay their eggs on broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, turnip plants. Another good host plant for butterflies is nasturtiums. Dill. 
Another tip for attracting butterflies to your property is to plant flowers in masses. Butterflies are actually quite nearsighted. They can see very well up to 10 or 12 feet away. But after that, everything looks quite blurry. So planting flowers in large groups will help them to be seen from far away and help the butterflies focus in on a food source. I hope you've enjoyed these tips on how to attract butterflies to your property. Hi, my name is Sydney and this is a little bit about my story. My whole life I have endured extreme bullying to a point where I didn't even want to go to school anymore. Girls were always mean to me and they publicly humiliated me any chance that they had. I developed extreme anxiety and was in and out of the hospital for months during middle school due to the stress my body went through from anxiety. I went from a happy honorable student to always sad and in my room and my grades decreased dramatically. I was always sad about having to go to school, so I eventually spoke to adults that I trusted and asked for advice. I always got the same advice to ignore it and it would go away or they would eventually give up. I tried this and I was picked on even more. When I first told Rosemary about my problems at school, she supported me and gave me amazing advice. She didn't push me aside like most adults did or tell me to ignore the bullies. Rosemary taught me how to respond kindly, but not allow myself to be treated badly. She taught me how to stick up for myself when I didn't know how to. She gave me a voice when I didn't know how to. I believe Joan's Joy Mindful Relaxation and Kindness program would help the bullies learn the negative impact that they make on others and help teach kindness and the importance of being kind to everyone's peers. Rosemary has already helped me so much with dealing with the bullies and I know she make a huge impact in schools. Most schools say they enforce a no bullying policy, but never seem to do much when bullying does occur in school. As well as this, victims are often afraid to speak up for themselves due to the fear that bullies have given them. I think that students and teachers need to be educated on the awareness of bullying and how kindness needs to be instilled in schools. So no, no child hates learning or going to school like I did. Rosemary makes a difference in everything that she does, and I believe that she's going to make a huge impact on students doing this program, and I would love to watch her do it, and I would love to experience it in my school. Hi, I'm... Senator David Carlucci, I want to thank all of you for participating in this extremely important conversation about keeping our children safe. 
as a father, a parent of two young boys, I know this is the most important thing that we can be doing as leaders in our community. I want to thank all of you who have stepped up to the plate, have added your suggestions and inputs, and have made a difference in keeping our children safe. I want to thank Rosemarie for your commitment and dedication to being a strong and steady voice in looking out and protecting our children. I've had the honor of working with you in sponsoring Paula's Law in the New York State Senate and look forward to continuing to work with you and everyone involved to pass that law and other measures to keep our children safe. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Kayla Pringle. I am a current freshman at Northeastern University up in Boston, Massachusetts, and I'm here to talk looking for more opportunities to volunteer and so I went on this website it was volunteering in Bergen and I saw this opportunity and it had said uh, comments are closed for future garage sale and at first I was like this seems like a little bit of a sketchy request but I ended up saying okay so I applied for it and that's when Rosemary got back to me she's like course this would be great you can come over help me sort you can take anything you're interested in just be for a few hours and I was like okay so I came over I sorted and I helped and it was such a great time and then that is when towards the end my mom was late to picking me up and Rosemary and I just had the chance to sit down and talk to each other so that was when things started picking up because Rosemary would ask me about everything, just like about my future, what I would want to do, and just and then she started introducing me to Joan's Joy. So she shared with me the story. She took me to Joan's old room, and she was just kind of sharing what exactly the organization did in terms of child safety and just all this information. I was like, oh my goodness, I have to be more involved in this. So she gave me the stuff, and then she took down my email. And she's like, yeah, I'll email you in the future. I was like, okay. And then that was that for a while. And then more events started happening, like the bowling event. I was there. She invited me to the Christmas party. And it just feels like such a wonderful community of individuals who want to come together to promote child safety in any way possible. And then uh, time passed, time passed, but we get to the summer. So you had an email about a garage sale, asking for volunteers. And I was like, absolutely. And so I show up, I start volunteering and everything. There's a whole lot of clothes, everything is great. And then um, Rosemary just starts talking to me about this book, The Killer Across the Table. And so I was like, well, of course I want to support and obviously learn more about Joan's story. So I asked my aunt to buy me the book. And then I read it the following week. Oh, goodness. This was honestly one of the most difficult reads for me because it was brutally honest. There was no, nothing held back, and it just really pained me to see all that such a young person had to go through. Like, there's no, no words that I can truly use to describe, like, the emotions I felt as I read the story about the person who killed Joan. And so, I... It was, it was just so difficult. It really was. Having to sit through and like listen to the details about exactly what happened to her, how she was just going around selling her Girl Scout cookies and everything, and that she was just so easily taken advantage of. And it really hurt to kind of like have to sit through the analysis as well of the killer. And just, it was very difficult, I have to admit. Like, I know that it's very difficult and that it's very, like, there's, it gets to a point where it's difficult to proceed with reading, but I felt that it was essential as part of volunteering in this organization because I wanted the chance to understand Joan because so much has happened because of her and her energy and just the person that she was. and. I wanted to understand all parts of her story and what made the organization that I volunteer for today what it is. So 
I read the book and it definitely made me feel like a string was pulling me towards the organization. I felt like there was just no way I couldn't continue to work for child safety after this. And I am just amazed at how much Rosemary was able to achieve after this. Like the fact that she was able to get up and work to get all these, this le the legislation she got passed, passed, and she works to raise funds for all these different events for children, and tries to educate the greater community about child safety, and I just think it's so amazing. And I, I have to admit, I think everyone should read this book. It, it was difficult, yes, but we need to understand all parts of Joan's story to be able to continue to work forward for child safety because we can't just gloss over it like it doesn't exist otherwise we're not truly understanding our mission our mission is to prevent events like that from ever happening again no child should ever have to go through that so I would strongly recommend the book thank you all so much for your time again it's called the killer across the table John Douglas and well, Oh, old shaker, please, I recommend reading it, please do. Thank you, uh, stay safe, stay well in this time, and have a great rest of your day. Bye. My name is Yvonne Reiner, and I am honored to be part of the online Hope in Action event to support Rose Marie's Jones Joy Organization. I admire Rosemarie not only for being an advocate for victims' families, but her perseverance and willingness to help and fight for children's safety. Rosemarie always treats others with respect and is willing to help those in need. Speaking of treating others with respect, I recently had my first children's book published energetic Evelyn and the shiny yellow spots. This was written to honor my late mother, Evelyn Schultz, who was a kind, considerate, caring, and humble person. The theme of my book is respect, perseverance, anti-bullying, and treating others with kindness. Here's an excerpt from my book. Tricky treats blurted out. I am unique, different, an individual, and a brave little bunny. I truly, truly, truly feel I can make a difference. I will make yellow spots the new normal. I am going to change the bunny's attitudes and make the bunny world a wonderful place to hop in. I am going to stand up for myself and all the bunnies that are different and unique. Upon hearing this, Energetic Evelyn, and this is Energetic Evelyn, is so happy to hear that Tricky Treats has decided to stay unique and keep his shiny spots. My book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Additionally, I would be happy to personalize a book for you. My email address is energeticevelyn at yahoo.com. My husband, Freddie, and I are proud sponsors of the Jones Joy Organization. In conclusion, I would like to thank Rosa Marie for her support during these challenging times. We all need a little respect and showing kindness to one another. Thank you so much for listening. Mike, what's up? This is what they call a shibori. Anybody want to feel it, I'll be glad to let you see it. Uh, and then if I'm a police officer, the INF is basically saying, okay, Mike, can you feel this? Yes, sir. Down your face, you can control a man to the point that you feet up across him. Hands up behind your back. Can you get out of this? Ah, uh, no, sir. Try. I, I can't. I can't, sir. This is Professor Harold Gushin at Fordham University in New York City with a brief message for you about heroes and particularly the remarkable family of Rosemary D'Alessandro in New Jersey and her children, John, Michael, 
and Joan. At Fordham University, we've been studying something called homicide activism. And Rosemary has been kind enough to speak at Fordham about this phenomenon. There are roughly uh, 15,000 murders each year in the United States. And of course, the victims are not only the person who was killed, but the loved ones around them. What, an, what, a, uh, a mag, what a, a clear source of grief it is to lose a loved one to homicide, someone intentionally taking the life of another person. And yet there are few among these grievers who rise above it. Homicide activism is defined as a redirection of a survivor's anguish and rage, love and loss, into positive energy to create positive social change and give some meaning to a seemingly meaningless death. Let me describe to you some of the home heroes among us. You may recognize Candy Leitner, a California homemaker. Back in 1980, her daughter Carrie was killed by a drunk driver. Candy felt so distraught and even more so when she learned that the drunk driver who killed her had a, had a long record. At that time, this homemaker said, I promised myself on the day of Carrie's death that I would fight to make this needless homicide count for something more positive in the years ahead. And of course, since 1980, this mom's courageous and fierce advocacy has caused a change in laws in the United States so that today homeless, uh, drunk driving is not a small matter, but people who get behind the wheel when inebriated face serious charges afterwards. Carrie Leitner was a homicide activist who made a difference. Another example is John Walsh. His son Adam was only six years old when he was killed. He never came home, and later his body was found. What a time of grief for John, his wife, their family. It was a very hard time, but somehow John found the strength to turn that grief around into a fierce determination to make a difference, and he became the host of America's Most Wanted. Over 1,200 criminals have been caught because of John Walsh's effort to bring criminals to justice. And finally, Rosemary D'Alessandro uh, lost her daughter Joan at the age of seven. Joan was delivering Girl Scout cookies and said, I'll be back soon, mom, and never came home. Rosemary not only lost her daughter, but she was surprised to find out that the killer was going to be released early from prison. At that time, Rosemary and John and Michael became homicide activists. And 43 years, uh, 47 years later, because of their effort, Jones Joy Foundation, the website on your sheet on your screen here, has been responsible for local, statewide, and even national legislation to protect future children from being victimized by predators. Uh, jo Rosemary D'Alessandro's efforts have made such a difference in our society. And although Joan was only seven years old when her life was taken, here we are four decades later, speaking about the difference she made in society because of her family, their love for her. It says in scripture, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And at Fordham University, I've written on this topic. If anyone wants to contact me at that email, takush at aol.com, I will send you a report on homicide activists, about 30 heroes among us, like Rosemary D'Alessandro, who have turned their grief into productive activity.
it's fair to say that society is not the same because of these heroes who are able to make a difference and protect those, the lives of others because of their own laws. Thank you. Sean Yazdi, and I'm fortunate to be part of this program and the service Jones Joy Foundation provides to children. Next up is a presentation from the YWCA Healing Space, Bergen County's Care Center and Resource for Sexual Violence Victims. They have been taking part in Jones Joy Child Safety Fest for five years, setting up the Clothesline Project, 
which gives victims and supporters an opportunity to design a t-shirt that expresses themselves and supports victims. Many people have made t-shirts for Joan at past events. Thank you. And here's the presentation from the YWCA Healing Space. Hello, our team at Healing Space, Bergen County Sexual Violence Resource Center are happy to support Jones Joy's message of child safety and recognize how hard they've worked to bring awareness around this critical topic to our community. Healing Space has had the opportunity to share information about our services that include sexual violence prevention, education and counseling services for those impacted by sexual violence at many of Jones Joy events over the years. During these challenging times, we support this organization's perseverance and commitment to educating others on the importance of child safety. If you or anyone you know is in need of help or resources pertaining to sexual violence, please call our free confidential hotline 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 201-487-2227. For more information about our services, please visit us at www.ywcannj.org. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Simaz Sadek and I'm the director at YWCA Northern New Jersey's Healing Space. I'm going to introduce you to Healing Space and all the supportive services and resources that are offered here. Healing Space is Bergen County's only sexual violence resource center. It is a safe, welcoming, and affirming place for survivors of sexual violence and their loved ones. Healing Space offers various supportive services and resources such as a 24-7 crisis intervention hotline, which is staffed by confidential sexual violence advocates, prevention education programs and events for the community, and individual and group counseling services, which help process trauma history and be a guide during the healing process. Healing Space's Crisis Intervention Hotline and online chat is available 24-7 and provides free assistance to anyone affected by or with questions surrounding sexual violence. The hotline and online chat are staffed by trained confidential sexual violence advocates. Hello, my name is Lindsay Short and I'm proud to be Director of Development at Center for Hope and Safety, Bergen County's nonprofit domestic violence support organization, we serve thousands of women, men, and their children each year who are living with the fear of violence in their homes. During this COVID-19 pandemic, it has, not surprisingly, become even more difficult for members of our Bergen County community who are living with domestic violence to find support um, as they are isolated with their abusers. And we are here to help. We're here to make sure that everyone in Bergen County knows that they can leave and we can help. We've remained open throughout the crisis and we will continue to remain open as the pandemic evolves. So thank you so much for all of your support. If you or anyone else you know needs help, we're here for you. Never Alone Again Domestic Violence Organization and Resource Center is here to support victims and families suffering from domestic abuse. Domestic violence comes in many forms and can happen to anyone. Many suffer in silence, living with their abuser, afraid to seek help. Never Alone Again is dedicated to providing confidential, individually tailored support services for victims and survivors of abuse. You are not alone. It is not your fault, and help is available. For more information or to make a donation, visit NeverAloneAgain.org. Hello everyone, my name is Leslie Rodriguez and I am the Director of Children and Youth Services at the Center for Safety and Change. The Center for Safety and Change is the only victim crime agency in Rockland County, New York. We provide services to victims and their survivors of domestic violence, sexual trauma, human trafficking, and other crimes. Services include therapeutic services, specifically such as creative arts therapy to children and youth ages 21 and under to help them heal from their trauma. We also provide advocacy, supportive counseling, shelter, court accompaniment, legal services, safety planning, and trainings on how to end gender-based violence. It's important to know that all crimes affect children. Please listen support and believe what children tell you. If you or anyone you know would like more information on domestic violence, sexual trauma, human trafficking, 
or other crimes or would like to know how you can help or get involved, please contact us at our 24-hour hotline at 845-634-3344. Or you can text us at 845-286-4997. Center for Safety and Change is located at 9 Johnson's Lane, New City, New York. Please know that all our services are free and confidential. Thank you. My name is Maria Peralta. I work at Center for Safety and Change as a bilingual human trafficking specialist. Human trafficking is a practice of exploiting a person for the purpose of sexual or labor servitude using force, fraud, or coercion. In my department, we work with adult survivors of labor and sex trafficking right here in Rockland County, as well as with CSEC survivors. CSEC is a commercial sexual exploitation of children. CSEC is a form of child sexual abuse, and it is any instance where a person under the age of 18 has exchanged a sexual act or performance in exchange for something of value. Actions which constitute CSEC under the New York State Safe Harbor Law include but are not limited to sexually explicit video or photography, stripping, exotic dancing, and child sex trafficking. Who are the victims of child trafficking? You may be asking yourself, what makes a youth at risk? Children who have a history of sexual abuse, physical abuse, maltreatment, or neglect. Children with a history of substance abuse. LGBTQ youth with, with people of color being at a higher risk. Refugees, immigrants, and non-English speaking youth, as well as homeless and runaway youth. A common misconception is that traffickers are strangers, when in reality, youth are most frequently trafficked by family members, boyfriends, girlfriends, peers, gangs, or community members. Some red flags to look for are youth that leave home frequently and or for significant periods of time. Show signs of mental, physical, or sexual abuse. Has someone who has a significantly older partner or spends a lot of time with a controlling person or older adult. Indications or reports of domestic violence or intimate partner violence. Lies about age or carries a fake form of identification. Housing is provided by the employer. Reluctant to discuss how they make money, where they live, how or when they came to the U.S. Has large amounts of money or costly items that he or she cannot reasonably afford. And significant reduction in contact with family, friends, or other supportive networks. If you think you know a child that is being trafficked or is at risk, please feel free to call our hotline 845-634-3344 for a consultation with an advocate. Services are available are including but not limited to counseling, help navigating services, mentoring, and safety planning legal assistance and accompaniments. Our CSEC high risk program ensures that youth who have been trafficked or who are at risk for commercial sexual exploitation are not criminalized, but are instead given a chance to heal with intensive crisis intervention services. Thank you. My name is Laura Hudson, and I'm the founder and art therapist at Hearts and Crafts Grief Counseling. We cannot thank Rosemary D'Alessandro and the Jones Joy Fund enough for their heartfelt gifts over these past few years. She keeps our doors open to children, teens, and adults that are living with loss. She asked me to do a special video for the Child Safety Fest this year, and I couldn't think of anything that would be more appropriate than showing you my magic rainbow. It's really easy and simple to make. All you need is some paper towels, a black permanent marker, and lots of regular colored magic markers. You're gonna take one piece of paper towel and fold it in half. After you fold it in half, open it up and take your black magic marker and draw a rainbow. Start with the inner side first, the little one, and you can keep going round and round and round. Doesn't matter how many you make, but the more colorful your rainbow is, the better it is. So now you have a rainbow on the inside of your paper towel. 
Now close that paper towel. And you're going to see it a little bit through your um, paper towel here. So you're gonna take that marker again and go over the lines of your rainbow. Okay, once you have that rainbow on the outside and on the inside, you're going to take, oh, I missed one, let's do one more. You're going to take your colored magic markers you're going to open up your rainbow so that you see the inside of it and give that rainbow some colors. You can choose your favorite colors. It doesn't have to be exact. And choose some bright ones. Do some red. pink in there. The more colors you use, actually the cooler your rainbow looks when you watch the magic. Now remember, you're doing the colors only on the inside of your rainbow, not the outside. Once you have your colored rainbow done, you're going to close the piece of paper towel back up. So now you don't see the colors at all. You just see your black and white rainbow. Now's when the magic begins. Remember, you needed a big pan of water. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your rainbow and you're going to place it in the water and watch the magic begin. Are you ready? One, two, three. Ta-da! Afterwards, you can go like this, drip dry your rainbow and place it on either a newspaper or a paper towel for it to dry. Here, I'll show you it again. Here's another one that I pre-made for you. So remember, you do black and white on the inside black and white on the outside. That's with your permanent marker. Then on the inside, you color your rainbow and hold it over. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. And there's your rainbow. I thought that making a rainbow today would be really appropriate for the Child Safety Fest because you can't have a rainbow without a little laughter and a little pain because together they make rainbows. I hope you enjoy making your magic rainbows at your house. Remember, all you need is a paper towel, a black permanent marker, lots of colored markers, either newspaper or a piece of cardboard to put it on for afterwards, and a pan of water. Have fun making your rainbows. I hope you see lots of them out there. Bye. It is my distinct honor and privilege to thank the Jones Joy Foundation and especially the D'Alessandro family for all of the love and support you've given to the YCS children for well, well over a decade. I have to thank you personally, Rosemary, and the Jones Joy Foundation because you guys have done so much for the children here at the Holly Center. You're one of the main components that make us more so a family. Uh, that's what I consider you and the Jones Joy Foundation. Uh, the countless times I picked up the phone and asked for your assistance, whether it was a barbecue, whether it was, you know, the, the Chromebooks that you provided for the children here and the telehealth services that you assisted with. There's just so many countless things. And again, from the bottom of my heart and from the children here on YCS, we thank you so much for everything you do. Perhaps the butterfly is proof that you can go through a great deal of darkness and still become something beautiful. That's why it's so fitting that Joan loved butterflies. While her life was cut short by an act of darkness, her beautiful spirit watches over the Holly Center children.
Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying the safety festival so far. My name is Michael and I'm currently in high school. I've been working with uh, the foundation of Rosemary for about five or six years now. Um, and for that work, Rosemary gave me a crayon actually to symbolize the importance of what I did for the uh, foundation so far. Um, and I'm actually gonna tell you a little bit about uh, what that crayon means to me. Um, through a school project that I had to do. Um, so I decided I got an assignment to write about a symbolic object that uh, I had that was special to me. Um, and I decided to write about this crayon that she gave to me. So I'm gonna read it for you. My most symbolic object would be a very special crayon that the president of my favorite charity group gave to me. A few years ago on a Saturday, I was going to a garage sale to check out to see if there was anything good there. It was a typical garage sale with millions of clothes, kitchen accessories, books, and more. I think I only got a picture that one of the sons of the lady that ran the sale took, but I ended up coming out of there with something else besides an object. I went there and talked to the lady in charge of the sale to buy the picture, and once I started talking to her, I would realized how impressive her work was. Her name was Rosemary, and she had told me a story that I will never forget. You see, what I didn't know was that the two sons of Rosemary had a sister named Joan. Joan was seven years old and was a very bright girl. She was learning ballet, it was a Girl Scout, and also played sports. A long time ago, she was delivering those delicious Girl Scout cookies that everyone loves to a neighbor named Joseph McGowan, a Tappan Zee High School chemistry teacher, when she was kidnapped. She was not found for another three days until she turned up at a state park dead. She had been sexually molested and killed by the teacher. The police eventually found him and arrested him and received a life sentence, but he was eligible for parole in 14 years. With, that, with a goal to keep this man and people like him that molest and kill children under 18 in jail for the rest of their lives with no parole, Rosemary created Joan's Joy. So 45 years and four laws later, with a lot of hard work, Rosemary had completed her goal of keeping terrible people like this man in jail. I was very impressed and surprised at how this lady had fought for her daughter and the safety of kids and dedicated a huge part of her life towards this. I had found a great charity and was solving a big problem in our state. So I decided to get involved by collecting money for the foundation donating and helping with events. In 2017, when the fourth law was signed, I was asked to reveal the tape for the monument dedicated to Joan at the Hillsdale train station. Of course, I said yes to this opportunity and felt great about doing it. Then only a few weeks after that, I was asked to participate in a fashion show benefiting the organization and the local women's club. I was so nervous because I'd never done anything like it before. And I wasn't, I wasn't too, uh, too happy about doing it either because I wasn't crazy about showing off or anything like that. So I wore a golfing outfit and had my trusty six iron and I supposedly did great afterwards. After the show, Rosemary had approached me with her envelope in her hand and she said, I know you were very nervous and anxious over this show, so this is for you. This expresses Jones and my gratitude for you helping us raise money for the foundation, she said. I said thanks and went back to my seat to open it. To my surprise, a green crayon fell out along with a letter. The letter was from Rosemary and explained the significance of the crayon. Normally, no one loves a crayon. You use it for a project and either it'll break, the pack will fall out all over the floor, or you'll get the wax all over your hand. But this crayon was different. It was Joan's favorite green crayon that she used to draw all of her pictures with. I was completely stunned and I was holding such a special object. I immediately ran up to Rosemary and thanked her for this generous gift. So when I got home, I found a plastic box and put the tape from the monument and the crayon in the box along with newspaper reports on both events. I shoved it up on the top of my shelves where I knew it would be safe and thought about how lucky I was. And that's the end of my um, my report for school. So um, I just wanted to show how the law affects me. Um, it 
it affects me because anyone that is my age or younger um, that gets sexually molested and killed or uh, will receive a life sentence and will not be put up for parole. And that just makes me feel um, very safe because I won't have to worry about people that do that um, on the streets and possibly looking for more kids. So that makes me feel really safe and I'm really glad that uh, Rosemary fought to make those laws. Um, and this just shows how the foundation just looks in the best interest for kids because uh, Rosemary and the foundation are just so selfless and they dedicate their lives to making sure that kids are safe. And they also, um, more recently, they take kids, underprivileged kids, and they take them to uh, amusement parks like Six Flags and they donate um, toys to them. And it's just, the foundation is just all about making sure that kids are happy and safe. So um, I want to thank you for listening. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the Safety Fest. Alessandro and all our wonderful friends at Jones Joy. I'm James Michael Riley, and I'm honored that you asked me to be a part of this. Velvet, I can wish you for the color of your coat. And fortune smiling all along your way. But more I cannot wish you than to wish you find your love, your own true love this day. Mansions I can wish you, seven footmen all in red, and calling cards upon a silver tray. But more I cannot wish you than to wish you find your love, your own true love this day. Standing there, gazing at you, full of the bloom of youth. Standing there, gazing at you with a sheep's eye 
and the licorice too. Music, I can wish you merry music while you're young, and wisdom when your hair has turned to gray. But more I cannot wish you than to wish you find your love, your own true love this day. With a sheep's eye and the licorice tooth and the strong arms to carry.